restrict an errant mind before it becomes fractious and divided. Can two enemies occupy the same body? No, for the first will direct it one way, and the second another, until they stumble into a ditch and its neck is broken. Likewise, two contrary thoughts cannot long abide in a man's mind, or he will become weak-willed and subject to any heresy. This is the seventh and final stricture of the seven strictures, a code of laws by which the religious group known as the Abbey of the Everyman abides by, in order to prevent themselves from falling into the clutches of the outsider, with the stricture itself compelling those who read it to not give in to their curiosity, as it will eventually lead them to ruin and worse even, heresy. This curiosity, however, is exactly what is responsible for perhaps one of the most influential groups to exist within the universe of Dishonored, the Academy of Natural Philosophy, a group that not only has given the Abbey some of their own technology, but has been single-handedly responsible for ushering in the modern age that we see in the Dishonored games, and may also be what eventually leads it to ruin. With that intro out of the way, we can go about discussing what exactly the Academy of Natural Philosophy, sometimes called the Academy of Natural Sciences, is, as well as its purpose, various functions in the Empire of the Isles, and beyond, and the natural philosophers associated with it, though I won't be getting into too much detail on that last one. To start with what exactly the Academy is, it would be best to look at similar types of organizations in our world that the Academy is based off of. That being that like most things from Dishonored, the Academy draws heavily from industrial era Britain. Hence, it seems closest in nature to the British Royal Society, formerly the Royal Society of London for Improving Natural Knowledge, wherein the Royal Society was founded as a group to help push forward the idea of the scientific method, though they refer to it as New Science, with it eventually evolving into a sort of governing body on all things to do with science, making strides in identifying and recognizing excellence in it, as well as correcting when that isn't quite the case. In this way, the Academy of Natural Philosophy, which was founded in 1572 by Erasmus Kulik, was more than likely founded to promote excellence in the field of natural philosophy, with it sharing its regulatory functions as well as experimental and financial support ones to the real-life royal society. Where the Academy seemingly differs, at least from a more surface level, from the royal society is in that it takes on a far more college-esque role focusing on not only driving forward the natural sciences, but also in fostering those who would carry them forward in the future. Though I should note that it is nothing like a typical college, as the process to even get into the academy is an arduous and fierce one, with applicants being forced to wait until the fourth day of the month of harvest to even submit their interview requests, and then, if they are accepted, having to compete against some of the most brilliant minds from across the empire, as only a handful of applicants are accepted every year. It's also due to this exclusive nature of the academy that its structure, both in personnel organization and architecture, is so unique, with the academy's known roles consisting of typical ones like professors, lecturers, researchers, and other, less typical ones like head porter and procurement clerk and provisioner. On top of this, the academy also consists of a governing body made up of seven members, known as the Council of Seven, all of whom are the best of the best in their respective fields with the head of the academy also being one of the seven council members. There is also the existence of a variety of academic, administrative, and unknown function bodies, some of which include the Alchemical Council, the Electromagnetism Council, the Convocation of Etiology, the Chamber of Smoke and Iron, and the Guild of Metallurgy. Though with all of these various groups of people within the college, it begins to get confusing as to what each and every person does. To this, the college utilizes uniforms specifically in the form of robes of varying color and design, with someone like a council member having a heavy charcoal gray colored gown with black banding, versus someone like a normal academician having a long black one. It should also be added that in regards to the head of the academy, they will have a far more elaborate robe with golden embroidery of celestial patterns. As to the architecture and physical structure of the college, it's located at a place known as 15 Oxblood Way, 
though nothing more of this location in terms of where it is in Dunwall, or even in Gristol, is known. The Academy's front has two large columns opposite each other with gothic arches somewhere along them. There is also a statue of the founder, Erasmus Kulik, in the Academy Square, and behind it, a scallop-shaped stone staircase that leads to the building, with a cloister and overgrown garden at the rear of the campus. The entrance to the building is a cavernous stony space, with a three, four-story high vaulted ceiling, and a roughly elliptical-shaped hall containing a massive staircase opposite the entrance that splits right before a gallery as it extends to the other side. Along the stairs, there are two glass-fronted offices, while on the sides of the hall are smaller, narrower stairs leading to dark corridors. There's also a massive whale skeleton hanging from the ceiling in the center of the hall. As for the other rooms in the building, the only one we know of is the council chamber, a large, octagon-shaped room with a high stained glass ceiling, and an enormous eight-sided oak table for the members of the council to convene. With the purpose and structure of the academy out of the way, we can now begin focusing, at least at a surface level, on the various alumni, attendees, and associated people of it. To start this part then, it would be best to briefly look over the most important figures first, of which Esmond Roseborough, Anton Sokolov, Piero Joplin, Kirin Jindosh, and Alexandria Hypatia come to mind. Of these people then, perhaps none hold more importance in the actual history of Dishonored than Esmond Roseborough otherwise known as the man who discovered the use of whale oil as an industrial fuel source. Though it is interesting to note that prior to Roseboro's success with the fuel source, he had been thrown into poverty by the rejection of his ideas by the Academy and other scientific institutions throughout the Isles. It should also be noted that Roseboro's work with Anton Sokolov was ultimately what became his legacy, and eventually what became his end. This mention of Sokolov lets us now delve a little bit into him, that being that Sokolov, originally an immigrant from Tivia, climbed his way up the ranks of not only the academy, but also Dunwall's elite, eventually becoming not only the royal physician, but the first known head of the Academy of Natural Philosophy, of which the only other known one is someone by the name of Professor Finch, who came after him. In addition to this, Sokolov, as mentioned earlier, attained his status primarily from his work on Dunwall's military technology but would go on later in life to work on far less violent things, such as a cure for the rat plague. Alongside Sokolov are those such as Piero Joplin, Kieran Jindosh, and Alexandria Hypatia, with Piero acting as not only a major plot point of Dishonored, but also as Sokolov's rival for a great many years. So much so that Sokolov got him kicked out of the academy, and Jindosh being hailed as a genius who was predicted to surpass Sokolov, though he ended up being expelled from the academy and joining Delilah in Dishonored too. As for Hypatia, besides the plot of Dishonor 2, not much is known about her time at the Academy, but it's clear that she is very skilled and knowledgeable in her field. Aside from these more important figures, the ones with less involvement in the Academy number quite high, but to name a few, we have William Trimble, a natural philosopher that Piero often clashed with, Luigi Galvani, though we don't quite know his connection to the Academy, Douglas Church, a researcher known to study whales in the deep sea, Dr. Toxvig, Sokolov's successor as the royal physician, Mal Chiodi, a member of the Cult of the Outsider, Bartholomew Vasco, Hypatia's assistant, and last but definitely not least, Dowd. Though in the case of Dowd, his exact connection to the Academy is not clear, which ultimately lands him in the portion of the video where he's not as important as the other figures, but it is believed that he might have attended for a while. With the purpose, function, and connected peoples out of the way, we can now go about wrapping up the video by summarizing and highlighting some of what's been learned. That being that in short, the Academy of Natural Philosophy is essentially a college-like entity, similar to the real-world Royal Society of London, that serves not only the advancement of science and the fostering of new natural philosophers, but also the various nations of the Empire of the Isles, with the various people who attended it or were at any point a part of the Academy making massive waves in not only the Empire, but the entirety of the Dishonored universe. As people like Mal Chiodi ultimately ended up deciding who the Outsider, or in other words God, was. Something that not only goes to show the influence that the Academy has had, but that it will more than likely continue to have, and as hinted in the beginning of the video, may just be something that leads to what the Overseers were so scared of. So with that, thank you to everyone for watching the video. I spend a lot of time researching and making these, and all the support is greatly appreciated. 
especially from people like Kita, who's helped me with the camera mods I use in videos, and the various proofreaders like Reployer that I get help from. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and if you disliked it, a dislike. But please, tell me why, as I'd love to improve my content in any way possible. But until next time, this is Kuyo signing off. See ya. Just to always step into war with our hearts.